Nintendo made a ton of announcements during E3 2013, and among them was Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U. And they didn't just show it off, because we gotta play it too. So you know what that means, it's time to hook up the old analysis machine and see what secrets all the footage might be hiding. And with that, let's get started. So right away, we can tell the game is basically a mashup of the two previous Mario Kart games, carrying over several of the unique features of each one. Take the Mario Kart 7 style coin scattered along the track for example, which increases your top speed with each one. And like before, you'll max out a 10 and drop 3 if you get hit. Then there's a return to the hang glider and underwater sections, also from the 3DS version. Then from Mario Kart Wii, we have the return to the 12 player races as opposed to the usual 8. In addition, the motorcycles from the Wii version are also back, except in appearance only as they now handle exactly like the carts. Which means you won't be performing wheelies for a speed boost anymore. Though to make up for this, they can now access the red second tier boost, just like the carts. Then there are some features that return from both of the games, such as performing stunts after going off a jump for a quick speed boost, as well as the aforementioned boost mechanic, which is still time-based, as opposed to the older Mario Karts where you had to wiggle the control stick. So yeah, Mario Kart 8 is basically what you would get if you threw the previous two Mario Karts into a blender, with one key difference, anti-gravity. Yep, as you've surely seen by now, the vehicles can now race upside down and all around in certain segments, thanks to the new anti-gravity wheels that allow them to cling to certain surfaces, which allows for all kinds of crazy track layouts and alternate routes. And these sections, based on our playtime, always seem to be preceded by a blue anti-gravity strip, such as with this shortcut in the E3 demo's second course, which clearly marks the start of it. But besides the fact that you can now defy gravity, the gameplay remains basically the same, right down to going off ramps for some airtime. Although there is one slight difference. If you ram into someone during an anti-gravity section, you'll both spin out. But it seems to have minimal impact on your driving. So clearly anti-gravity will play a pretty big role in the game. It was featured in all three of the demo's courses after all. And even the game's logo is based around this concept. While it is the 8th main Mario Kart game, the logo is also based on the demo's first course, which itself is based on a Mobius strip, i.e. a closed surface that consists of only one side, that in this case resembles an 8. And this design will only be possible with just such an anti-gravity mechanic. And by the way, did you notice how the actual racetrack itself in the first course is held up by support beams? That's a really cool little detail that's almost totally unnecessary in a world where things often float in midair for no apparent reason at all. Now as you might have noticed, we've been referring to the courses only by the order of their appearance in the demo so far. And that's because they don't actually have names yet. Or do they, as it seems one of them might. If you take a look at this screenshot from the demo's first course which features Peach's Castle, we can see the sign here clearly labels the track as Mario Circuit. Although it may seem odd that Mario's track prominently features Peach's Castle, this is actually consistent with every Mario Kart game since Double Dash. Then there's the fact that Goombas, though now in stacked form, and Pipe Piranha Plants also make an appearance, which is also consistent with previous Mario Circuit levels. But there might just be something that's inconsistent. In almost every Mario Kart game to date, Mario's racetrack appears later in the game, being featured in the second cup, the flower cup, and six out of the eight games. With the only exceptions being the original Mario Kart, which doesn't really count since it had multiple versions of the same racetracks that appeared throughout the game, and Mario Kart DS, where it appeared during the Star Cup, which is still toward the middle of the game. But this time, we actually think Mario Circuit might be the first one you play in Mario Kart 8. For one, its simple design lends itself perfectly as an introductory level, especially since it was also the first level of the demo. And since the game's logo is based on the same track design, it would make sense that it would show up as the first course in order to set the tone for the entire game. And then there's the fact that Mario Kart DS's first course was also a figure 8, and was even called the figure 8 circuit. So it seems likely that this figure 8 course will also be Mario Kart 8's first one, which would actually be the first time a Mario track has started off a Mario Kart since the original game. But in the interest of looking way too deep into things, there could be one slight snag with this idea. You see, up to this point, every other entry in the Mario Kart series has started off with the Luigi course, specifically the 2nd, 4th, and 6th games being Mario Kart 64, Double Dash, and Mario Kart Wii. And since we're now on the 8th one, that means Mario Kart 8 might just start off in the same way too, at least if it wants to maintain the pattern. Of course, all that could be entirely coincidental too. Okay, if you're not sick of us talking about Mario Circuit yet, there are just a couple of final details I wanted to point out. Like the various signs around the course, such as the one from Mario Motors, complete with the more cartoony version of Mario, reminiscent of the artwork from the 8-bit and 16-bit days. And did you notice the more conventional question blocks next to the oil cans here? It's a cool little detail that's easily missed. And in the trailer, we get a good look at what appears to be a news truck reported live from the racetrack. And finally, did you catch the birds that hang out on the racetrack between lulls in the action? Okay, we're done with Mario Circuit. Now let's take a look at the demo's second course, which takes place in a coastal city highly reminiscent of San Francisco, with its steep hills and cable car obstacles. Though these ones are being driven by a Koopa Troopa. And did you notice those cable cars are each themed after a different Mario character, such as the Mario, Luigi, and Wario ones here? And if we look at the front side, we can see they're even wearing their hats too. Even the sailboats bordering the racetrack are themed after the racers in the same way. 
But despite the overall San Francisco vibe, there's also the Statue of Peach out on an island that looks suspiciously similar to the Statue of Liberty in New York. And the mere prominence of that statue might also hint that this very level could be Peach's course. And by the way, did you notice this racetrack is filled to the brim with details? Take the Galaxy Air sign at the start, complete with a Luma from Mario Galaxy. Or the nearby DK Burning Banner, followed by a Super Mario World one, complete with a dolphin from that same game. And then there's a prominent Toad Toy Store building that you can race along in anti-gravity mode, followed by a Peach and Daisy storefront. And finally, we have this ad for Shy Guy Medals, which according to the sign, they've been at since 1987. Which is actually a clever reference to the year that Shy Guy made his debut with the Japan-only Doki Doki Panic. Then we have the demo's third and final level, which takes place in the Ghost House. It features an underwater anti-gravity section complete with bonefish and a split path, as well as a hang gliding section where you have to dodge boots. And just before the end of each lap, you'll have to watch out for some attacking suits of armor possessed by, who else? Those pesky boos again. And did you notice the carts now turn on their headlights when in dark areas? That's pretty cool! Okay, so that covers the three courses in the demo that we were able to play, but the trailer actually reveals snippets of five more. Now three of them we've seen before, as the remakes of Dry Dry Desert from Double Dash, Music Park from the 3DS version, and Piranha Plant Slide also from the 3DS. And there seem to be no appreciable differences we can tell from these clips, besides a vast increase in overall visuals. As for the other two courses revealed in the trailer, well they're brand new. One seems to take place in the Cliffside Ruins area, but we can't tell much else from it besides the fact that we'll have a hang gliding section. The trailer also revealed a candy themed course, but again there's not much to see here besides tons of candy based structures, like this windmill made out of wafers. But there's one small detail we noticed. In this picture, the house here appears to have an odd-looking insignia above the door. While it looks like a cookie, it also looks suspiciously similar to the flower icons that often represent Daisy, including the one she wears. Is it possible we're looking at Daisy's course? And speaking of Daisy, we knew of 12 of the racers so far. And they are Mario, Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, Bowser, Donkey Kong, Toad, Koopa Troopa, Daisy, Toadette, Wario, and Waluigi. And we're guessing there's still some left to be unveiled, considering both Mario Kart 7 and Mario Kart Wii had many more, with 16 and 24 respectively. And that's not even counting the ability to use your Mii as a character. So we strongly suspect there are at least 4 more unannounced racers, and potentially even more. But who could they be? Well, since we saw Mario Galaxy referenced earlier, we'd be very surprised if Rosalina didn't return. Especially seeing as she's the only character to have appeared in both of the previous games that hasn't yet been confirmed for this one. Besides the Mii, that is, who we also expect to be back. And along those same lines, as we saw Shy Guy referenced earlier, there's a chance he might be back too. Okay, that's enough about the characters, what about the items? After all, what's a Mario Kart game without them? Now while we saw a fair chunk of them in our hands-on time, we can see there are actually even more in the game if we slow down this clip of getting an item box. If we watch it closely, we can see a ton of items cycle through, which includes Golden Mushrooms, Stars, Fire Flowers, The Bombs, Mushrooms, Triple Mushrooms, Red Shells, Triple Red Shells, Green Shells, Triple Green Shells, Bananas, Triple Bananas, Thunderbolts, and Bloopers. And on top of all that, the game's producer said in an interview that the Blue Shell would be back too. And though he also mentioned the Blue Shell's traits may be tweaked a bit, every other item we've seen in action all behave as they have in the previous games. Oh, and you can even still drag items behind you too for protection. Unfortunately, they haven't shown any new items yet, but we expect to see at least one or two new ones like in past games. And speaking of past games, you've probably noticed by now just how much better this game looks than before. Like if we take a look at this screenshot, you can see Mario's pants even has a textured look to it now, like actual jeans. And if we look at this picture, you might be able to pick out some super small details, such as how the wheels now have Mario Motors written on them. And if you take a look at the bike's engine, we can see it has a question mark coin icon as well as a mushroom just above that. Okay, we're just about done here, but as usual there's still just a few final details left. For one, based on our playtime, it seems you can no longer earn a speed boosting draft by racing closely behind another racer. But of course, it could just be that it wasn't implemented in time for the demo. And along the same topic, every level in the demo is only two laps instead of the usual three. Although it was probably only set up this way to keep the demo line moving, it could hint that you might be able to choose the amount of laps again in reverses mode, like in Double Dash. Then we got a glimpse of how points are tabulated after every race, and not surprisingly, it's very similar to Mario Kart Wii's, because they both have 12 racers each. However, there is a slight difference. While the top 3 positions still earn 15, 12, and 10 points respectively, everyone 4th and below earns 1 point more than they did before. So basically, if Daisy here were playing Mario Kart Wii instead, she would have won 0 points instead of 1. It shouldn't change much, but maybe the developers just didn't want you to feel too bad? Finally, we have that lovable Lakitu who returns once again, and we can see he still fishes you out if you fall into the water. But this time, instead of cutting right back to you on the track, the camera actually follows Lakitu on his journey, which again, is just like the original Mario Kart game. And did you notice his shadow actually followed alongside the building in this scene instead of just appearing as a small circle directly beneath him? It's a nice little touch that helps demonstrate that we use increased power. And with that, we're done covering everything we could dig up on Mario Kart 8. As always, let us know if you missed anything by posting in the comments below. If you enjoyed our analysis, please make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at GameExplained for all the latest gaming news. Thanks for watching, and make sure to stay tuned to GameExplained.com for more Mario Kart 8 and other things gaming too.